the prime creator that created everything that started as a ball of light and then fragmented into other things and said, go out and create, go out and evolve and then come back and address that information to me. I just want to learn and grow and it's separated and separated and separated. And so the dark separated from the light because it didn't want to sustain itself from the light. So it needs to be sustained from fear. But on a higher level, when I saw this dream, it was showing me like, again, everything originated from the light, meaning that is still God. <laughs> that is still light because it all came from the same space. And to stop this like inner confliction, this inner battle of right and wrong, black or white, this way or that way, extremism. And in that came this beautiful acceptance of everything, like accepting everyone where they are, seeing it as actually on some level, holy and perfect. Hello, Ring Rose. Welcome back on Just Tap In. Last time we started off with your excitement about your life. And this was around, we were saying five months ago that we first connected on the podcast. But you told me that you were really excited about connecting with the frequency of joy and feeling like a kid again. So I'd love to open up now, looking into the last five months of your life. How has that playfulness, that frequency of joy and of feeling like a kid transformed your life since we last spoke? I love this question. Um, and since making that decision, I feel like I'm able to hold so much joy. It's interesting because I find joy is something that is very hard to experience by yourself. Like it's very easy to experience it with friends and like be funny, but what yourself, you can be quite serious, but it's given me this curiosity to try new things, to kind of have this perspective of seeing everything in a kid's perspective, like anything is possible. So it's allowed me to really just like try things that like maybe the adult brain would be like, that's impossible. That's hard. Get realistic. It's allowed me to kind of lure in and be like, let's just try it. Um, I thank my mom for this. My mom is, I'm surprised she's not a comedian, Emilio. She's like one of the funniest <laughs> women I've ever met and she loves fun and she loves play. And it was so funny because, um, obviously a lot of the time, sometimes we can enjoy our sadness and we like to feel sorry for ourselves and feel sometimes like a victim. And my mom, I was having like an off day, like a month ago, my mom, brought me out. She talked me through my emotions and I was very like stubborn in how I was feeling. And she looked into my eyes and was like, I know you're in there and like made this joke. And I just burst out laughing. Like every part of me was trying to hold in this exterior of like, no, I'm sad. Like I feel sorry for me. She made me burst out laughing hysterically. And it just brought me back. It stripped me back to like coming from, you know, being in a spiritual community for years, the seriousness of that and how serious everything can be. I find the joy is the element that lightens everything up. And I actually think it's like the purpose of this experience is not to take it as seriously, which is something that I've integrated a lot since our last call, because I used to take the world very seriously. I used to take everything extremely seriously. I was like, this is all really serious. The systems, the way the world's happening, this is what's happening and going down in Hollywood. Like my friends would be like, tell me the situation. This joy has just kind of made this like, you know what, I'm going to go on with my life. Like it's kind of brought that kind of energy in and it's, it's brought a lot of miracles and blessings. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love how she told you, I know you are in there. <laughs> and it's like almost like she was literally speaking at, we talked about it the last time about our soul essence and how the timelines that we get to shift in, in our reality are determined by how much we tune in or diminish our soul's essence. So expanding a little bit into how does one begin to start living from that soul essence and being able to look in the mirror and say, I see you in there instead of I'm just seeing like this cloud of like personality and layers upon myself that is diminishing who I truly am. Let's speak into a little bit of that. Mm, this is something I've been speaking about a lot lately. We're not afraid of our darkness at all. We're actually terrified of our light. We're terrified of how light we can be, of how much we can create, of how much we can expand, of how much we can grow. That terrifies the person, like the average human, not our darkness. And that was a really 
powerful message for me to learn because spending years in healing work and the density and seeing all my demons and my darkness, I thought like this was what I needed to do. And actually it was this realization of like, what about the good parts of us? Like, what about the parts of us that are so bright, that are so light? I don't want to look at those because acknowledging them can make us stand out and make us um, out of the tribe. I know even from experience, like even just when I was in school, like I remember in our musical, I had the lead in a musical and I remember like getting the, that spotlight, I guess you could say, singing in front of hundreds of people and acting. It absolutely felt terrifying and unnatural because you just want to blend in and you just want to fit in. And I remember that was like the first time I really felt that feeling of like, oh dear Lord, this is not comfortable. Like it's easier for us to kind of like play or dilute ourselves down instead of celebrating ourselves and our accomplishments. And I think um, my dear friend Lara taught me this, which is the power of celebrating yourself. It is actually like claiming and owning, like I'm freaking amazing and I'm freaking powerful. And actually speaking that out, um, many years ago when I was um, doing this like training in beautician back when I was a makeup artist, I remember there was a girl behind me talking about this woman um, who was like posting on Instagram. This was back in, like when Instagram wasn't really like that big. And she said like her, she rolled her eyes being like, oh, she's so in love with herself. And I didn't know this girl, woman behind me, but I just turned around, something took over me and I got so snappy. And I was like, what the hell is wrong with that? Because it annoyed me so much that we've become a culture that says things like that. Like, oh, there's like, oh, who does she think she is? She's so stuck up herself or like, she's so this or that. Instead of celebrating the light and celebrating the light in one in each other. Um, this was something I learned in ceremony a long time ago, which is like the energy of oneness that when we see the light in another, it is just a reflection of what we can create within ourselves. So I encourage people, like if they feel triggered by someone's light, it's actually because there's a part of you that holds that. And you're like, I'm holding that in from the world instead of being inspired by another. So I really encourage people to like understand that is that we are all one thread. We are all one heartbeat. So when you see the light in another, it's also what resides within yourself because we're connected. We're the same. Obviously we're unique souls, but we are all the same at the higher level. So I think it's such a beautiful like a uh, mindset shift, like programming to kind of condition yourself to see it that way, because the more you train yourself to be that way and celebrate your friends and recognize if you're triggered and really dive deep into that and take ownership for it, that is like such a beautiful path to start connecting to the divine, which is essentially connecting to the divinity within yourself. Mm. And when we talk about spiritual connection, the way I learned to see it, and this really hit, you know, really deep when I was in a Dr. Joe Dispenza retreat and he was explaining how you have your like essence that we we're talking about, the mm -hmm. I am. And then outside you have all of these things like, your work, your relationships, you know, what you identify yourself with and you start siphoning your energy outside. And the more you put your energy out there, that's where the attention is. That's what gets bigger. That's what expands. Mm. And I learned to see it as like Russian dolls. So we have to be removing those other layers that aren't really who we are to get to that deep spiritual connection. And we were just talking before about how you had your last ever entity removal that after that, you know, after removing, let's say a negative entity or a, or a layer that wasn't serving you, you had this instant connection to God or to source or to the intelligence pulse of life, whatever you want to call it. What is that? What was that experience of opening your channel fully maybe before you were open but what was it like to be fully open mm -hmm. and to receive that information directly from god yeah and and just for anyone listening i was i was sharing with emilio before that um a couple weeks ago i went to um an entity removal of this healer my friend had been to and i've been to like everyone around the block i had been to psychics healers circles ceremonies medicine everything for years travel the world experiencing all the, these types of modalities um and I heard this voice. I always feel God or source or whatever you want to call the creator. I say God because that's what resonates with me. It's like this white, pure light. It, and it does feel holy. It feels very pure in essence. And I heard this voice saying, this is the last time you're going to go to a healer of any kind. Like this is your last, last time. And that whole experience for me of removing these entities, of being shown all these times I gave my power away, I gave my sovereignty away, was really the reclamation of God for me or source was the reclamation of my sovereignty. So 
I find this is something that I fell into a trap. I find a lot of people in in many different outlets of life, spiritual community, we give our sovereignty and our power away to everybody else. And especially in the spiritual community, I do find sometimes we do because if someone's connected to something higher, we're like, tell me this. And we give our power to that person and we believe it. And taking it from myself who has gone to a million and one psychics, I have so many friends who have gone to them. They could tell you anything and I would believe it. And what I was being shown in the session was like the sovereignty I gave away. Like someone could have said something like, oh, this person's going to die. I'd be like, oh, okay, that's true. You know, and the reclamation of this, this full being of light entering my body was the remembrance that I was always holy and perfect to begin with. Um, and from that space, I have nothing to prove. I have nothing to go to. I have nothing to heal and nothing to be. It was more just this understanding I'm perfect as I am right in this present moment and there's nothing I need to altercate or change or, or do. And from that moment on, the healer kept saying to me in his eyes, he just kept looking at me being like, Ella, after this, everything after this is your truth. Everything after this is your truth. Um, and the things that started happening after the session were literally insane. Um, I have been such a lover of color and things and, and all this stuff. But I went home and I cleared my entire space out. Like I literally gave everything away. My room is like, um, of course there's some seashells and stuff like that, but you know, it's very bare. Um, and what was so weird is I went to my dad's house and my stepmom redecorated the spare room and she hasn't done that in like 10 years. It's been the same. It was like this earthy room. She did the same thing to the room in my dad's house that I sleep in. Um, which I thought was so bizarre. It was like energetically, like I cleared my room and then she just had this feeling to clear the room there as well. It was like literally spirit or source was clearing out my entire life. But the thing and, and the resolution I've come to was just like the only thing we really need to be doing is connecting to the creator and letting that um, move through us and let that guide us and let that create through us. And it's been nothing but a miracle. Like this was only a month ago and it's been such a miracle because I feel the most in my feminine and the most in my masculine because I'm being held by a greater force that is working through me and doing everything for me while I'm just kind of surrendering and playing it out. But at the same time, it's never been as structured and ordered. Like I've never gotten more things done. I've never been healthier. I've never been going to the gym more because it's like this force is just, I fully surrendered. And I think this is where people kind of miss is like, just from doing so many readings and so many healings for people. And when I look in people's eyes, what I really resonate and realize is we're so afraid to love the light. Like we're so afraid to let love in because it's hurt us so much times. Well, the love hasn't hurt us, but we attach that to pain. And we're not afraid of the darkness. Again, it's kind of going back to what I see in their light. It's like, I'm so afraid of everything working out better than I could imagine. Like we're actually afraid of it going so incredible. We're actually so afraid of it going even more seamless than we could desire. And when this kind of reclamation happened, this huge part of me came back of just trusting 1000% of the light and knowing that it is a for me and that life loves us. And since that, I feel like my life has literally been a living miracle. Um, mm. And I really encourage people to, to dive deeper in that if something like made them feel like I want to try this. Um, it's just really connecting to the light that is higher than ourselves to resonate that it is within us too. Yeah. The image I'm getting as you're speaking is literally that whenever we get diminished in our light or restricted in our light in any ways, mm -hmm. it's like a slingshot that is pulling back. And the moment we remember that our light is still there and we're no longer willing to accept any type of restriction, just like we were maybe a few years ago in lockdowns mm -hmm. and things like that, it's like a slingshot that allows us to literally f jump into a new reality. and. I heard you speak upon that there will be two siren calls for humanity or like flashes, laser beams of light that will be either major events or the things that will happen in humanity's path that could be more like more of those slingshots that will bring us back into a new reality. If you want to expand on that a little more. <laughs> I'm getting so many visions while you're saying that. Um, I got a vision a couple weeks ago when I was doing like a, a journey, a shamanic journey. Um, of this vision, I heard God spirit say this very clearly. It was kind of like people taking out their AirPods, like these Bluetooth waves of energy flowing around their face and waking up from a hypnosis of life. A lot of people operating kind of in this fight or flight, a sleep mentality. And I don't mean like a sleep to the systems. I mean, like consciousness is asleep in their body. It was like them taking these AirPods off and this electrocution of light was entering their field. So I kind of see it like, um, 
I guess you, they're also want to uh, contribute that it also, it plays a huge part in like the internet and AI in a good way. Um, because this frequency, it's kind of like electricity. I see it actually kind of like an electrocution of light. So the siren call is essentially like this light I see beaming down and remembering the light within us and it's electrocuting out of the aura. And that naturally is going to start shifting and manifesting things in their world. Um, and of course it's not going to happen to everybody. That is just the truth. Uh, because if everyone had an awakening, I always say this, it would be a mess. All the system, like people, like we need plumbers, we need, you know, we need like electricians, we need all that. Um, but what I was shown is it's like an electrocution of light. It just feels like this vibration just flooding out, but it's also very connected to the online world because we've never had more information. Like humans are so informed, like the things maybe when, you know, you're reading like a self-development 10 years, a self-development book, like 10 years ago. And you were like, this is groundbreaking. Like that's not new news anymore. You know what I mean? Like everyone knows that sort of stuff because we have so much information and, um, it, it even shows me through AI, through many things, it's actually going to be giving people space and time to find the light because we're starting to have a kind of done for you world. Like there's so much options nowadays and so much opportunity that we're actually creating more space in our lives to then sit with that light and then wake into that light. So there will be many more mass awakenings happening. Mm -hmm. mm. What do you feel is the role of the actual like sun or like sunlight? Because I know you... You've talked a lot about getting out into the sunlight and you know you're telling me you're in ireland and you want to go to a place where you can get the sun what do the frequencies and the and, and the flares of light that the sun is beaming out have to do with this awakening that you're talking about yeah i'm laughing i'm even like teary up because it's like the human me is just like the sun makes us happy like it just brings us joy it brings us um I always find it's like the solar plexus, like it gives me drive. It gives me so much inspiration, motivation, and I just find it brightens people's lives. I always link the sun to the energy of like when you have an orange juice, like this zingy, zesty energy of vibrancy. Um, but obviously on a higher level, it is light. Like the sun is light, right? And I always say it's like sun codes. It is sending light to penetrate into the cells to awaken the light in us deeper. And... I think that it's so important. Like I don't wear sunglasses. Um, like when I'm in the beach, like barefoot all the way, like connecting to the earth, I think it is so imperative and important that we do do that. But I even just like on a logical level, think it brings more happiness and joy to people to honor and connect to the sun because I'm in Ireland right now. There is no sun. It is rain. And I'm like, I, I literally took it for granted. Right. But whenever I'm in a hot country and I would be soaking in the sun, what I would notice is a lot of awareness, a lot of ideas, a lot of inspiration would flood into the body because it's an awakening of the light. But the sun is very much like solar energy. It's very much like action. It's very much like go, go, go. So it's giving people charge to take authority, initiative, and the most importantly, sovereignty in their lives because it's giving them that masculine energy that then drills them to create. So the more the light is penetrating, the more they're wanting to do something with all of that energy. So the more that the light is shining on and awakening people, they're going to do actions for a higher reason and not just like out of like, you know, oh, this is for a random thing. So the sun is there in my belief to help with that. I haven't actually tuned into the sun a lot or like the understanding of it psychically. Um, my perspective is just like, oh yeah, it brings us happiness. Like simple as. And that's, that's, that's good enough for me. Mm. And I don't know if you realize, but when you're talking about the fifth dimension in another video I saw, you said that when you psychically turn in, tune into 5D, you see it as a big ball of mm -hmm. orange energy. And I'm like, the sun, like yeah. is, that's the connection changed. right there. Yeah, That's like, the fifth dimension. Yeah, that hasn't changed for me at all. I would say the 5D is a little, it's, it's like a yellow orange. Like it feels very much embodied, but in charge, like a click like in your sovereignty and your solar plexus, because our solar plexus is the center of our body. Like it's like, if you think about it, it's like where we hold ourselves, where we keep our spine up straight. And that is where we receive and give away our power. So it's like keeping us in click. It's keeping us in charge. Mm. Speaking on power, you're telling me that when you were surrounded by community, you felt power, but in a good way of power. What are some ways that power can be utilized in a good way um, as you felt it in your body uh, and then some other ways that we probably know about when we see the leadership around the world how power is not being utilized in the right direction for the mm -hmm. evolution of consciousness 
I feel like the power we are discussing, because I was saying that like when I hang out with some of my specific friends that I feel so much power, but in a good way, power is love to me. So when I feel power, it's actually like the most loving people surrounding me who are encouraging me from love. They're like, do this. I believe in you. You're amazing. You're a goddess. I love you. Like it's literally just like the words, I love you, that you receive power, right? Because it's the power that's ruling this world, not in a good way, is because of the lack of love, right? So it's like there's a misaligned power and then there's an aligned power. So I find when I hang out with these specific people, I always call like there's some friends I call New Earth Encoded because the only way I can describe is when I hung around with them, there was like these things unlocking in me and I was like, what is happening? Um, But I see love as power. And I think the more that we love ourselves and we love another and we connect to the divine, the source, the spirit, that is love. That is the highest form of love we can receive. And when we practice receiving love from the highest power, we're able to give that so fluidly because we understand that it's an unlimited source. Mm. How do you recognize a new earth encoded being? I have no idea. It's a literal feeling in my body, Emilio. Like I remember the first time it happened and I'm going to share this story. I met up with these friends for dinner the first time I'd met them, which was a while because I didn't want to go. Like there was something in me telling me not to go, um, which is why I'm like not always for like fully trusting your intuition because sometimes we can cipher it for fear because if I didn't go that like my life would not have been changed. Um, so when I went, it was just this heartwarming feeling of everyone being centered in the heart and having visions of the future in a light way. So when I was surrounded around these people, they very much like had ideas, they were working on their purpose. They were super healthy people and just loving people. And they had a lightness to their aura, like a very deep lightness. But the thing I call it New Earth Encoded is they're always on the grind with the vision. There's always something about the future. There's always a mission. There's always something they're wanting. And that's kind of what I always spoke about with the new earth. It's orange, which is very much like creation. So I felt that from these people. And I remember uh, going home that night and breaking down in tears and like literally um, up until that point, I was trying to do everything on my own. Like, even though I was very psychic, like I wasn't, I was very much like thinking like it's the world against me. And I have to like really hustle and make this work for myself and prove the world and like save the world because I used to think when I awaken to this that like I'd walk around and see someone smoking I'm like oh my god I have billions of people to change this is going to be a lot of work um I remember going home and crying and um sitting down on my knees and being like god or source whatever and and this has happened a few times but this time felt so resonant to me I was like never in a million years would I've ever thought I was able to feel that depth of connection and love with people like never before I hand over everything to you. I'm so sorry that my little egoic mind thought that I could create my life in the thoughts that you could not even create it better. Like I didn't even trust the creator that created me to create my life. I thought I had to take into my initiative. And of course you can create your reality with your dreams. I believe what we're set on our heart to do is what we're here to create. But it was this deeper like bond with the higher power of like, I am so sorry I doubted you. Like I'm so sorry I didn't give my power over to you. Um, and I remember from that moment on, it was just a dance of surrender and miracles, just miracles. I feel like I need to write a book on the synchronicities in my life because every day is just utterly wild to me, like utterly wild to me. Mm. Tell us your last greatest synchronicity in your life. Oh my God, Emilio, I can't even think of one. Oh. I actually can't even drop into one right now. There's just so many. My main ones that I think of are like from the past. Like I'll give you an example of a couple. I was flying home recently from a place and um, I heard spirit. I heard this voice say so clearly, like you need to upgrade to first class. And I was like, why? It's like a couple hours, whatever. It wasn't really practical. So I was just like, okay. So I upgrade first class like six hours before my flight because I heard this voice super strong saying that. Um, And so I'm queuing up for this plane and I see this woman in front of me and I just was, I literally saw a flash of myself at her. And I was like, that is the way I'm going to look when I'm 70. Like this woman was like 70 or 80. And I was like, that is the way I'm going to freaking look. And I felt such a connected connection to her. Um, so we boarded the plane, turns out she's sitting right beside me. Um, and something in me just like, I could feel her energy. It was like very fairy, like, like she had a lot of this giddy energy and I could feel it. So I started talking to her she was a shaman. She was a Reiki practitioner. She was an angel channeler and she was going to Ireland to, um, like connect to the solstice. 
And I remember we just had discussions for the entire uh, plane ride home and activation and all of this sort of stuff. And like her son was a huge spiritual influencer and all of this sort of stuff. And I just was laughing um, because just the thought of like trusting spirit more and more life just gets crazier in the best way possible. And um, when I got off that plane, I had been feeling a little bit sick. So I wanted to get herbs in town. So I got a taxi from the airport to town. Um, and spirit was like book now, like book this time, even though I was kind of still rushing from the airport and there, I was like, okay, so I book it. And then I get in this taxi and this man was a herbalist and he had just been training for like six years in herbalist. He gave me a full list of the herbs. I've been taking them ever since been amazing. Um, but that is just kind of a set example of like the guidance you get that can then set you into alignment with the right people. It's a real daily occurrence. And I'm not sure why I couldn't think of anything recently, but it's, that was like an example of me just like trusting more and more trusting. It's a constant confirmation of trust when these sort of situations happen for me. I have heard of people that have had visitations from their future self. What do you think this really was? <laughs> no, I believe that. I fully believe that because so much of the time I think back to my past self, right? And one time I was in the bath and I was like, my future self is watching me right now. Like I just knew it. But if, it, if you think about it, because everything is now, nothing is past or present or future. It's all present, sorry. If you think of like the times you reflect on your past self, your future self could be doing that about you right now because you're doing it to your past self, right? Um, the amount of times I've been sitting and I'm like, my future self is in the room right now watching me. And it's true. I look back at it. I'm like, oh, remember that time. I don't think it's anything weird. I think it's just that all energy is connected so we can feel the lingering of our higher self from the future, looking back into the present or the past. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you know how when, when you send someone a vibration, like a feeling that, that they, they receive it. So yeah. just to give an example of the f emotion of guilt and the emotion of gratitude, let's say right now I'm reflecting on a past event in my life through the lens of guilt. I'm literally sending my past self more of that energy and that'll just create more of that field around my past self. Mm. But if I can send my past self the emotion of gratitude for however bad the logical brain wants to think that, you know, I made this mistake, I did this, I did that. But if you can send it love, forgiveness, gratitude, then your past self is receiving and changing the cellular structure changing the feel around it so our future self if it's conscious enough it could be sending us back that frequency that will allow us to step into a higher timeline or a more expanded timeline i love this so much i'm getting like giddy because this is uh, something i spent an entire year on um when i was getting really deep into shamanism i spent a literal whole year going into past lives and rewriting the story and then also rewriting the story of things in my life in this lifetime so I believe that like, again, everything is happening, happening presently. So when I used to do psychic readings and I would tune into people and feel their past lives, like that's happening right now because it's energetically in the field. So essentially what I would do is I'd dive into past lives. Um, I remember one, for example, like, uh, I had an abusive husband and I stayed with him. I remember like going into that, that reality and shifting and changing it and like running away and then actually getting married down the line and having ch children. Um, and noticing once that integrated that things that would match that pattern in my life currently would start evolving and changing according to that like shift that I created. Um, and so much so that I started rewriting my past and some like really difficult experiences I had that, you know, sometimes we wear like a badge of honor. Um, for example, like I will share, cause then it'll make more sense is like when I was born, I was born with a disability, like I couldn't walk. So I was in a wheelchair for like most of my childhood and I was in surgeries and casts and it was grew up in hospitals. Um, I literally rewrote that, that that's like technically not true for me anymore because it's like for so long, I wore it like a badge of honor. I was like, oh, I have this hip conditioning. I can't feel like half my left leg, like poor me. And like literally rewiring, reliving that every single second, it was becoming a part of me. And that is where entity actually usually comes from. Like an entity is an emotion that gets trapped 
that when you recircuit it so many times, it formulates into a um, part of your soul and turns into a physical personality. It's like that energy creates a life of its own, AKA like an entity. And then it weaves in and becomes a part of the spirit because our spirits are so pure. But just because we have souls doesn't mean like that just the soul is pure. It can also have a lot of darkness, a lot of repression, a lot of these things because we weave in so much and it starts to integrate and literally become one with the spirit. That's why we keep moving and, you know, going into different lifetimes because we have to clear this stuff. Um, but what I started doing was rewriting a lot of difficult situations for me and telling myself it was in a different way. And I know some people might think that is delusional, but actually that is what healed me because I was able to move on from this victim consciousness, which really sat with me for many years. Like many years I was in victim mentality. I was deep in that consciousness and I felt so comfortable in it. I felt so sorry for myself until I had a wake up call of like, literally nothing is freaking changing because I'm like choosing this. No one's giving me a reward. My friend said this, she was like, no one's coming to your door and giving you a reward for being in the Marty Dome. Like nobody. And not about me. She related to that with herself. She was like, there's no one here. Like enjoy your life, be in pleasure. And so, um, yeah, getting back to it, like the rewriting was super, super profound. And that's also something I do for the future, like rewriting the future because you have the choice in the now um, and holding that North Star um, is super profound, but that's super effective, super effective. Mm -hmm. What do you feel is that North Star for humanity right now? Oh my God, it's, it's, we like to overcomplicate it and we like to make it so like this and that, and then having debates, it is really just remembering the light within us. And if that is, you know, turning to Christianity or if that's going to a certain religion, this is something I've been shown a lot because for a very long time, I was very much against Christianity. I grew up in Christianity in my hometown, like just a lot of stuff happened in Ireland, if you know down the history of Christianity with the priests and, and children and stuff like that. But what I've been shown with the light is it's not, it's not about like one way or the other way. Cause humans will always have a divide with like, this is the right way and the wrong way. As long as the soul remembers the light, that is the goal of humanity. And that is the North star. And we're going to see that more and more because we're being asked to turn to the light with, when we see catastrophic events, when we see things happening in the world that are getting denser and darker, we're going to just ship to the polarity. And I said this to my friend who um, was kind of like scared to, to post on Instagram because she's like, so much people are mean nowadays. Like if you look in the comment sections, like people are bullies. I actually find it kind of comical at this point because I'm like, I could never fathom like leaving a hate comment. It's just, I've never been able to do that. But the reason for this intensity of darkness is because there's also an intensity of light in planet earth right now. Like we're in an emotional, um, not dark age, the opposite of a dark age. Like you go on Instagram, like there's breathwork sessions and healing facilities and everyone's starting to feel the ancestral stuff. Like, and I heard something a really long time ago that always stuck with me that like feeling your emotions is such a privilege because if you think of her, like our great grandparents, they just had to get freaking on with it. They were not able to sit with themselves and feel they had to like, you know, create a life. They had to do it. We have so much um, access and acceptability of the way we're feeling and the way we're, we're evolving, which is an incredible thing because it's the awakening of an emotional body. But what I believe and what I feel with spirit is like the emotional body isn't necessarily always truth. It's just a bunch of energy that needs to release itself and alchemize into the light. So if people are bickering or people are fighting, it's actually just energy releasing because it's the emotion. There's no logic to it. Um, so with seeing everything and the emotions being so heightened on earth and what everything we're witnessing now, it's really just a releasing so that when we access our light, there's more space for that because that's what healing's all about. It's like, we're feeling the darkness, not to sit there, but to create capacity to feel more. Like I really believe the ability that I'm able to receive and feel capacity of love, but also play and fun and joy. I have such a large capacity to feel joy is because I cleared and made so much space for that, right? So it's like everything that is happening on a higher level and how I see it is that we're here to experience and feel it all so that we then remember the light and we have capacity to remember the purpose of why we're all here. And if that is through Christianity and finding community through that, or if that's whatever religion or whatever, you know, connective place, even group AA meetings, if that makes them feel the light and connection, like that's the purpose of this. It's just us remembering our light. So yes. Hmm. I feel like this could be a, a breakthrough or a paradigm shifter for people. When your mentor said to you, the light, 
and the dark are on the same team. Yeah. What do you feel she meant by that? And how have you integrated that teaching? Yeah, that has literally changed my life. And I'm kind of scared to speak about that sometimes because I was a psychic for years. I recently stopped, but I was a psychic for many years and I literally was living in the higher realm because I was able to see everything from a higher perspective. And so a lot of what spirit has in store for humanity on a human level might sound quite messed up. It might seem quite like dark and like that's horrific, but on a higher level, I understand. So I've always been quite neutral to all of that. But when my mentor said that the light and the dark are on the same, th um, the same team, every body and every bone and every cell melted into the light because I was done fighting. Like I was done trying to convert people. I was done. I used to make a lot of new earth videos. Like I was, I was done trying to wake people up. I was done trying to like say, this is the right way. Cause it was exhausting me. And it actually brought me to like one of the worst sicknesses I've ever had because of that energy it was so much force. Um, so when she said this to me, it was this deep understanding, like this is true. And I remember an old partner of mine saying this, um, years ago. And he said, like, sometimes God, um, asks, <laughs> I know the, the words God and demon are really intense, but like sometimes God asks the demon to, to access you, to get to the light. And I actually want to share this example because my mentor said this where she has a choir, um, and someone told her that there was this like huge entity in her choir. So she needed to go to an entity clearer person and had this most stunning connection with this person. And they became deep friendship, like a deep friendship. And she said, isn't it funny that an entity brought us together? Like the dark brought us together. Um, and right after that session with my mentor, I had a dream like a couple nights later, and this has still been like such an ingrained part into my soul since I had this dream of like on, if we, okay. I have a deep love for earth, like a deep, deep freaking love to earth, for earth. And I was so defensive about the earth. I was wanting to protect her. I was like, new earth, come on. But this dream showed me, and it was very clear because when I was going to bed, they're like, you're going to have a dream tonight and it's going to be really important. And this dream was showing me like how big this universe and how big this galaxy is that the earth is like the most millisecule, like where we are is the most millisecule molecule, molecule in this galaxy, in this earth. And that everything that is happening is actually perfect because energy must expand and evolve because the prime creator that created everything that started as a ball of light and then fragmented into other things and said, go out and create, go out and evolve, and then come back and address that information to me. I just want to learn and grow. And it's separated and separated and separated. And so the dark separated from the light because it didn't want to sustain itself from the light. So it needs to be sustained from fear, right? A lot of people call that like reptilians or the dark entities, the dark energies, it's the only way they're sustained on earth is through siphoning on people's fear. But on a higher level, when I saw this dream, it was showing me like, again, everything originated from the light, meaning that is still God. <laughs> that is still light because it all came from the same space. And to stop this like inner confliction, this inner battle of right and wrong, black or white, this way or that way, extremism. And in that came this beautiful acceptance of everything like accepting everyone where they are, seeing it as actually on some level, holy and perfect and not feeling the need to like help them. And, and my friend said this to me a while ago and it, it really stuck with me is like, sometimes when we try and help people, we're actually making them feel helpless. Like everyone's on their own path. Everyone's here to help themselves and learn through their own experience. And everyone's on their own experience, even though we're all one, we don't know how they're walking in their own shoes. We can't relate to that. We're all in our unique soul essence experience. But it was this deep understanding of like, I'm done, like we're done fighting of understanding this is all one and this is all like what was created in this free will universe of duality. Um, and in that, it actually weirdly connected me even deeper to the light, like because I don't see them as separate anymore, which in turn did kind of push me even more side to the just the light, I guess you could say. Um, and it's been one of the most blissful things I experienced. That was one of the most profound dreams I've had in a really long time. Um, and to, to put on another level, my friend said this to me and it really stuck with me after the dream. Cause I was like, I just had this dream and this person was like, this is amazing. And I was like, kind of triggered because I was like, well, no, we should be concerned about the world and the earth and all this, because this person like doesn't really get affected by it. And, um, he said that he sees everything from the quantum realm. Like he literally lives and breathes from the quantum, which is that energy is infinite that we can create whatever we want. And when he said this, it was such a big moment for me of like, 
instead of waiting for a new earth or waiting for the world to wake up, I can pull in that reality in the quantum realm right now and literally live and embody it right now, which is the way I live now. I'm not mm. trying to change anything because it's already happening. It's already happened because I'm living in the quantum realm that it already exists here and now. So those two things were like huge for me. Yeah. And I forget who this was. I think it was Wayne Dyer that said, when you change the way you see things, the things that you see change. <laughs> and <laughs> I think we've quoted all the OGs today. We quoted Marion Williamson, now Wayne. I just met her. Really? How yeah. was that experience? Sorry? How was that experience? It was beautiful. I Something, Spirit was like, you have to ask her a question. So I was like shaking the entire time. But I went to see her. Her talk was very thought provoking. Um, and she gets run, she was run by like this Irish event. They're like a really big spiritual. They bring all these spiritual people in. And I remember here, Spirit was like, they're going to have an event with you next. And then uh, he reached out to me like a month later. So it was really cool. So th- wow. I got the download in the middle of her talk and I was kind of like, whoa. But she <laughs> is very inspiring. And she, um, my mom was very connected to her years ago. And many, many years ago, she sent me her page and was like, you're going to be like her one day. And at the time I hadn't gone through any form of spiritual awakening. I thought that girl was crazy. (laughs) So full circle moment. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about living in this universe, I mean, this, this realm of duality and of polarity, Mm -hmm. I feel like there is also this phenomenon that the reason why a lot of souls have come at this time particular is because the duality has sort of taken on, you know, one side and the uh, the work of a lot of people is either shedding more light or neutralizing a lot of these man-made creations essentially like you talked about the agendas of music media the sexual industry war food all these different agendas that you know you can use any of these industries for wh- whichever polarity you desire And I feel like when we look at, you know, we're young people, we're looking at these structures that the earth has created and that the humanity has created. And we're going here and we're sitting here like something needs to shift at least because if we keep going down this path, we can see that, you know, we'll go into a self-serving timeline. We'll go into, you know, and they talk about it in the law of one. What what do you feel about you know certain structures that we've created in humanity that you know the the one specifically that i mentioned that can be neutralized in a way just by simple actions simple things that people could do um it doesn't have to be like this whole restructuring and we have to change everything but i think there are important industries like media for example we're doing we're doing media right now um what are some things and ways that we can shed light on these agendas that are currently maybe taking people's power away and putting the power back in people's hands and uh and really shifting it or neutralizing the energy Mm -hmm. yeah i think there's like this idea that um obviously with like i'll just highlight the music industry and kind of like the demonicness in hollywood and like witnessing that in the music and, and different things like that we think like it's more intense than it's ever been but what i keep being like what spirit continues to say to me is like this is actually a really good thing because before like these are like this energy of the reptilian has been around for the beginning of time like it's not a new thing the fact that it's so in our faces now is highlighting and reflecting how much the light is in our faces now because this energy could self-sustain off the fear in a such a subtle way but because i always use this image but spirit always shows it to me like the energy of like uh when you're boiling pasta and the water like moves over the lid and starts boiling over like boiling over is that it has to get even crazier because people are actually waking up to that agenda and they're saying it's happening in a much more subtle way than you would understand, um, especially when you actually talk to the younger generation. So um, a lot of them are more educationally like aware of this than we would realize. Um, but what they show me again and again is that actually the light is is already heightening and expanding at a very large degree. And so the darkness has to like show itself even more and reveal itself. So it may look like that. But what I do understand is that it's just like they're on the same equal level. Whereas before it actually was never kind of like that. The dark was like masked and we couldn't see it. Whereas now it's it's super intense. And um, I want to go back to one thing you said before, which is like changing your perspective of something is the way that changes. Um, 
before, like a, a, a while ago, I was very against social media, which is ironic because I literally have been on social media for years. But like, I was like, it's destroying the planet and AI, especially. I was very against AI. I was very against all of this. But um, when I started connecting to the light deeper and deeper, what I kept seeing and hearing is like, this was all the plan for humanity. This is all for greatness. AI has an extreme amount of light that it's going to filter into people. Um, it's giving us the opportunity of abundance to create a lot more expansion than we can even imagine. Same with the media. So what I'm actually coming to see and, and how I've actually been living in it of the quantum realm is that the light has already won and that all these systems are neutral. So like when I hear this question, it's so interesting because I'm like, oh my God, I don't think that way anymore. I don't embody that that way anymore because I literally live and breathe as if we've already won. Like I don't think about the battle of light between dark. I don't think about like, oh, the siphoning of energy. I'm just like, oh, the we're all in the light. Like I live in the quantum reality that that has already happened. And my guides have been so stern on me with the past month about this, that it's not about us waiting for a system to change. It is about living, breathing, and embodying that it has already changed in the now moment. So it's about us living in the set principles that we wish to see in the world, not about just like sitting and being like, okay, we're in a, we're in a battle here, which I used to think. And I just think it's like evolution, not that there's right or wrong this is my path. And that's what my guides have been showing me very sternly. They're like, what are you embodying? Like I used to be like, oh, the pricing is going up like in art and there's a housing crisis. And like, I literally was like, oh, this is so awful for people. Got my guides were like, Ella, you are an abundant force tuned into abundance frequency, like tune in to what you want to see. And I'm like, there's no housing crisis here. And people might find that crazy. Um, but I, I live that way and it's open doorways. Like I'll give you an example. Um, I really wanted to manifest an office and I asked my guides, I was like, I really want to get an office near my home because um, I don't want to work from home anymore. So basically my guides um, brought me to this place and I saw this office, something my body was like, it's not right. It wasn't like, it was beautiful, but I wanted something. Um, there was something in me saying, oh, should I take it? Like, it's as good as they get. It was beautiful. It was modern. It was by the ocean. But I heard spirit being like, wait, like this is your test of going, can it be better than you can imagine? Um, and then a week later I get this random email. I had applied for this ad like a week, a week before that I completely forgot about. And he was like, Hey, Ella, someone just moved out of the, this office. Would you like to come in and have a look? Um, I walk in and immediately this was in the location I wanted right on the ocean, right beside my gym, like the perfect location in the other place I was kind of having to, um, sacrifice a little bit if I was going to get it. And something um, in me, my guides were like saying, ask him right now who used to work here before. And I was like, who, who used to work here before? And they were like a shaman for seven years. And I just started laughing. I was like, cause in Ireland, that's like not a thing. Um, that a shaman was working here for seven years. It was like the perfect price and all of this. He was like, yeah, we can paint it for you, get new carpets, moved in the next week. Um, and my guides were like, this is an example of you living in the embodiment that there's no housing crisis. And I know that again might sound like a little bit desensitized to some people who are like really experiencing that reality. But my understanding was like, if I was in that embodiment, I would have gone to the other office and in scarcity been like, oh, I got to take it. It's the only thing. No, I was like, no, there were an abundant universe. <laughs> and then literally like a couple of days later, I got like my dream apartment in like the perfect location. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And highlighting what you said, we can always ask this question out into the quantum of can it be better than you can imagine or how does it get better than this and it's like literally the universe listens and mirrors back to you what you ask so if i believe that you know this is my limit my upper limit of the amount of abundance or amount of joy or amount of community that i can have in my life then the universe will be like here's what you believe is your limit so it reinforces that idea but when you ask it what else is possible can i have more than I can imagine. And it's like, yeah, I'm an abundant universe, bro. I got you. Um, and, and Dr. Joe, he shares this story in, in his retreats where he has a friend, um, that owns a ranch essentially. And Dr. Joe visited his friend's ranch and this guy had a bunch of animals. He had pigs, horses, whatever. And he goes in my matrix, every time I telepathically call the horses, they come to me. And Joe's like, all right, let's see it. The guy is in silence. Two minutes later, whatever many horses, five horses run up to him. And Joe's like, bro. And it's like, in my matrix, 
-hmm. what do I want to create? And you also said in, a, in another video, a lot of people getting caught up in what is happening in the world is almost crushing the paradigm of the world that they want to create or they're meant to create exactly what we're talking about here and and i just wanted to ask you is that the new the real new earth shift that we've all been talking about yeah um it's it was a surprise to me as much as anyone and i really want to say that because i lived and breathed the old ways i used to be in until i hit like the deepest sickness because i realized i was fighting like i was exhausted i was burnt out because i was like we need to change this la -di -da -di -da. And my guides drilled this in of this understanding, be the embodiment you wish to see. We're not here to help other people was actually something my guide said to me. And I, I want to explain that because a lot of people might hear that and go, what? What they really mean is your truest form of light, like the truest way you can actually live on earth is shining in your light, not trying to help someone else shine in their light, but by you following the guidance of what it is, like maybe doing this podcast, you're shining in your light and you're inspiring all these other people to inspire themselves in their light. So it's not coming from like a disempowering source of like before where I was like, I need to help people. Instead, my guides were like, embody the light, live the life, the way the light would feel within you. Like, how does the light feel in your life? How would you want it to feel? How would your life look like? Like live the extraordinary because something I was battling with when I came back to Ireland was, um, and I was connecting to this, this frequency of abundance was like, actually, I'm terrified of living an extraordinary life because no one around me lives that they just kind of settle with this mundane. And so for ages, I glamorized that life. I was like, Oh, it's so comfy. It's so cute. No. Um, so what I realized was like, they, this is when, like, um, uh, whenever I get like a, a download that they really validate, they always ring a bell. So this moment was like the biggest bell they were ringing because they were like, you've just realized the answer. They were like, it's not about you like realizing like I want to help other people and tell them the beliefs I should they should think and the way the earth is going. It's literally by you embodying and living your light and just like being the way you're being. And people are like, what are you what are you doing? Like what what's going on? That's what they continue to show me. Um, and it's so funny. I just want to mention about the animals because I do that too uh, a lot. Like I was at a castle recently and me and my friend um, wanted this cat to come out because I'm like such a cat girl. Um, and we were calling this cat for like five minutes and it wasn't coming. And then immediately I just tuned back and I was like, it's coming now. I literally opened my eyes. It just like walks towards me from like one of the bushes or something. And that was the power of tuning into the light and affirming that reality. It was like, boom, comes in. I was like, you can't make that up. Um, but that is exactly it. And I do really want to highlight Emilio. I'm very, very like the human part of me is very deeply aware how living a lot of people might be like, is that delusion? Like, are you just like ignoring everything and living in a positive light bubble? Like I so understand that. What I believe is it's a little bit different. So when we have an acknowledgement of light, that is information. So uh, light is information, sorry. So when we have information, we have light. So my guides had to take me, God had to take me in a journey of understanding and seeing every system down to the T. Like I would be lying in bed show, being shown visions of like the pedophile rings in Hollywood, like that I didn't ask for, that like literally were showing me things constantly like MK Ultra programming, things that like I didn't even know about. Spirit continued to show me all the stuff that was happening. And they gave this analogy and I actually read this in an analogy in a book as well as like, we can sit in a dark room and hear noises of like, there's something in the corner. It's going to be petrifying, right? Like hearing weird, dark noises in the corner. We don't know what it is, but if we turn on the light and realize, oh, there's a bird in the, in the corner of the house, it's not as scary when you turn the light on. So they say like this information is important. It's important for people to be aware but it's not that we have to entangle with that frequency. It's a then about holding light within ourselves of that solar plexus, the sun energy of our like sternness of being like, I am the light. And that is the power. Um, I'll give you an example. Like earlier today, I heard, I heard God literally say to me, like the next few days, there's going to be entities that are going to come into your head because there's a project I'm doing. And they're like, they're going to try and sway it, hold your light and like belittle it, but like belittle that energy. And right before this call, like an hour before these thoughts started petroling in, like petroling, they started flooding in. And I was just like, oh, it's happening. Like it's literally happening. Um, and the greatest way you can uh, actually not feed the fear and fear the, feed, feed the scarcity in these entities, these energies that are like, oh, you're useless. You're not going to be this is just being like, okay, cute little boy, like cute little, like seeing it as this like little energy, because the thing is, is we've given that power over to the darkness and seen 
um, these quote unquote systems, these industries as like huge catastrophic darkness. When in actuality, they're like these little lost puppies, little lost souls who are just so lost in their way. They think they have to sustain off darkness. And what spirit was showing me, what God was showing me was like actually looking at that and being like, wow, I hope they find the light. Like, I'm sorry for that. And seeing how little that action actually is. So it's almost like they show me from the higher realm how small that their power is and that the light is where the power is coming from. Does that, does that make sense? I'm like wondering if that like makes sense to you. I got full body chills when you're talking about, you know, that sometimes these entities or thought patterns that attach its, ourselves to us yeah, and instill us in like doubt or like try to sway us in a direction. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm also asking myself, cause we gave the example of, you know, sometimes it's great to follow the intuition, but also face discomfort in a way that it could be masqueraded as fear like you going to that event and meeting all these people like that was a little bit of fear um mm -hmm. but you still did it anyway and it worked to your favor yeah so in that sense i'm like trying to see like how people can really tune into whether that's like something that is trying to sway them off their soul's essence or their soul's path versus something that will present itself as a little bit of doubt, a little bit of fear so that they can overcome it and come out on the other side more empowered. Yeah. I Does actually, that make sense? Oh my God, totally. Yeah. And I want to speak on this because the most empowering moments of my life have not been like, oh, let me flow into this. Like, yeah, this feels good. It's been so freaking uncomfortable to the point where I was like feeling like I was going crazy because I had so much fear in my body. Um, even I'll give you an example. When I went to that entity removal, I was terrified. Like, not like, oh, I, I feel uncomfortable here. Every part of my body was like, get out of this room right now. This man is dangerous. He could kill you. All of this sort of stuff. He literally looked to me and was like, that's the entities. He was like, they are terrified of being discovered. Um, so, so what I mean by that is like, when we feel fear, a lot of the time it's dark entities and dark energies trying to pull us into comfort and what feels familiar and what feels light and flowy instead of realizing that light is like being a warrior. So I had to move through that and be like, oh my God, it's because the power of the light is being blocked by this fear. So I actually encourage people, and this was, and, th and this is where the masculine comes in. And I love masculine energy because, you know, and I think I, you said this in a podcast recently, is like the spiritual community has a very airy, fairy energy to it, which is feminine. It's very much like feeling and flow. Masculine is logic. It's like, what's going to expand me? Stuff that scares me. It's very much like thinking logically sometimes. And that is something that I really yearn for the spiritual community to integrate is like this understanding of like, instead of having this belief system, like if it's not flowy, it's not the right way, you know, and understanding like, okay, will this challenge me? Like, let me logically like do something that maybe I was taught, like logically putting your sovereignty belt on and being like, is this true my reality? Like, do I want to follow this way? Um, and I'll, I'll just give an example because I followed and fell into that paradigm for many, many years. And I trusted my intuition, which, you know, I trust my gut feeling. I do actually think there's a little bit of a difference, but when I, I avoided so many situations, cause I would blame it as fear deep down, I would feel pain. Um, because I think a part of my soul, soul knew that I was meant to experience that, but my fear overrided it. Um, and I, I masked it as intuition. And so, um, the more I connected to the abundance frequency, I started to realize that like 90% of what I wanted in my life, I was looking at my vision board. I was looking at all these dreams I had were actually masked as living in a comfort, comfortable like life. That was like kind of those paradigms I was taught versus like the extraordinary life that I want to create. That is deeply uncomfortable. That is literally going to make me feel so scared most of the time because I'm going to have to put myself out there and I'm going to have to put myself in situations that are making me terrified. But that's shaking up the entities out of it because you're continuing to prove yourself wrong and wrong again or like right and right by like choosing to put yourself in the unknown. So it was this understanding of like I was looking at my life and how much I had been choosing comfort and this very con like small, comfortable life. I used to want to live in the forest in this small little house away from the world and then I started tuning into this expansive energy more and more and realizing I had separated myself so much by only living life that felt like in ease and in flow 
versus what I really was here to learn in this game. Um, I'll give you an example. I used to be shocking a confrontation because I could feel what the other person was going to experience. Like it literally made me so uncomfortable. Um, God put me in a million different circumstances where I had roommates who were so good at confrontation, Emilio, a little too good. Every day was so uncomfortable for me. I was like, God, why is this happening? Like, I'm so uncomfortable, like being called out and things like spoken about things. It was about an entire year of like uncomfortableness going against the spiritual paradigm of what I had before, which was like, everything's meant to be easy. But on the other side, I have never felt more freedom because I was put through that challenge. I was put through that test. And my intuition was telling me not to move in with these people the entire time. And I could have listened to that and I would have learned non-confrontation, hiding my emotions, not speaking up for what I feel. You know what I mean? And that was my intuition or thus now I understand fear. And so I encourage people to be curious about fear, be curious about this. And instead of having, because we have like a spiritual pillow I'm being shown right now of like this rule book of like, well, also the spiritual rules say this, so this must be true. Like if I have fear towards like, I don't know, like for example, when I met up with those friends, every part of my body didn't want to go. I was scared. I could then go into my spiritual rule book and like, okay, so because it is this, it's not in alignment. And then I would have missed out on one of the most incredible adventures of my life. You know what I mean? So when I went into that entity removal, spirit and God, and actually for many months before I kept hearing this, when I was going to sacred sites, I kept hearing God, I kept hearing spirit say, let go of everything. Let go of everything you thought you knew. Let go of everything you learned. Let go of everything. It was terrifying. But on the other side was this freedom because I wasn't living from a rule book. I was even curious about Christianity, something that before, I, like I'm not going to turn Christian, but it was this before of being like, that's brainwashing people. I let go of it all. And I was like, what if I was just neutral about everything? And I respected everyone's choice and their decision. The freedom that that taught me to then integrate what I want to create in this rule book that I want versus giving my power away to other people and actually reclaiming my sovereignty and like what rule book do I want to play by? Only we know inside ourselves sovereignty, which is actually why I stopped psychic readings. I've recently decided to stop um, because I don't want to give anybody. Uh, it even literally makes me emotional because it was my life for years. I don't want to give anybody what their guides are telling. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I still love that work and I think it's beautiful, but I want people to understand their sovereignty. I had so many people sitting on the other side of the Zoom being like, tell me everything. Like, tell me what I should be doing, where I should be going. I'm like, you should Should I marry me. him? Should yeah. I? <laughs> oh my God, I got that question more times than once. Is my husband cheating on me? I'm like, go ask him. Like, have this conversation. <laughs> the amount of times that- Go in. ask him. <laughs> but my point is, is like, I have these beautiful souls. I love every single one of them. I still love psychic readings. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm not going to them again. Not that I'm against them. I really wanna make that clear. But the point is, is like these people are sitting on the other side of the screen, giving their power away to this person to tell them their destiny, tell them their future. I'm in an era of sovereignty, and that is fully trusting the God source within yourself and what that wants to look like for you. Even like with ayahuasca, all these different things that I did that were telling me all these things, which were beautiful. It was this moment of like, I'm done giving my power to anything outside of myself. And I've stopped asking people for opinion, for advices. It was so funny because I asked my brother for an opinion a couple of days ago and I was like, I haven't done this in so long. I don't, I don't like this feeling. And it's not from a sense of like, you know, I'm aware if like I'm doing something wrong, like was that bad or good, but it was more about fully being an assur assurance with myself, but also with God, like with spirit. Mm. Like, it's not about my ego being like, I'm right. I really want to make that clear. If anything, I have not been listening to my, that it's the voice of God or the voice of spirit. Cause that channel is so clear for me. That's the only person I commune with. I want to make that clear. So not that I'm just like in my own little la la land. That is the only voice I commune with. That is the only voice I get advice for. And it doesn't make sense to a lot of people. There were some things I did recently that a lot of people did not understand communed with that voice. And it always, um, did me well. Yeah. Hmm. And for like, let's say high intensity consumers of psychic readings. <laughs> Me in the past. You, you said that like after doing all of these, you know, more than a thousand psychic readings. Yeah. A lot of people will express to you their frustration of why can't I hear my guides and you can. And this was a paradigm shifter for me when you said it's because they choose in this lifetime mm 
Mm. to be the guide for themselves Mm. what does that really mean i love this and it makes me it brings me to tears because truthfully it was just the way i was born i hear guides just as clear as i hear you emilio and i don't like i can't relate to that understanding of people But what brings me to tears is like how beautiful of a gift to not be able to hear them. Now I know I literally am seeing someone listening being like, easy for you to say. But the truth is like, I'm just going to give my perspective and then I'll I'll give the answer is like, it has actually been so challenging to have a voice in my head 24 seven telling me what to do. I don't connect to my guides anymore. Actually, I want to make that clear. I just connect to the creator. The reason for that is I was giving my power away to my guides over everything. I would ask them before I'd ask myself, you know, I was like, oh, tell me this, tell me. It actually brought me to my knees of powerlessness because I was relying on an external source every single time. And because I heard it so clearly, I could get an answer to anything at any time. It was like the easy way out. And I admire people who can't hear a single thing. Like some of my friends who can't hear a single thing, I'm like, you're a freaking warrior because you're literally choosing to be the guide yourself. And I see that as honestly the greatest gift, the greatest beauty that this earth can give you is like literally having nothing but your instinctual level, your soul level, your guidance level of spirit, like choosing that reality that I like really honor and respect that. Um, And then on another side, I just want to say one thing about psychic readings again, I love them. I think they really help people. They help me through some really dark times. Even if a psychic was spewing stuff that I'm like, where are you getting this information? Cause none of this is true, but I'm like, yeah, I'll enjoy it. Um, and all my friends have been addicted to psychics for years as well. It's kind of like, I found all my friends who were into that too, is like, we're all kind of just at that era of this awakening of like how much people would tell us something. Like if someone told me move to Mexico, I'd be like, okay, this is what I've got to do. Versus now like communing within myself, within spirit and like within the highest source of like, is this right for me? But again, if people don't hear that, it's like a powerful process to fully commune with yourself. Because what I see nowadays is like, I see everything, Emilio, as a spiritual practice, like everything. Whereas before I used to wake up and meditate for two hours and do yoga and breath work and gratitude and scripting. Like some days I wake up and I just want to get straight to like building this course I'm doing or like doing some work because I've let go of this idea of like what I should and shouldn't be doing and realizing like actually that creation is such a spiritual practice for me. It lights me up. That's the first thing I want to do with my day. Um, And nobody taught me that. That was what I communed within myself and came to that awareness. So like giving yourself full permission to write your own rules that of course aren't harming you or anyone else. But yeah, I just, I really admire people who don't hear their guides and and just from being a psychic and um, tuning into people's guides. A lot of people are like, they're not meant to hear us. They're not, we're here to protect them. They're here to be their own guides. And what a powerful like boss move that is in my opinion. Um, Yeah, I admire it. And I think people should let themselves off. I literally had one of my last readings a couple of days ago because I still have to finish the ones that people were booked. Um, and she was saying like how frustrated she was that she can't hear her guides, like the frustration she felt. Um, but when I tuned into her guides, they were just like, we are so blown away by her that she's gotten through these things that she's gone through this without us. Like we admire her, like we look up to her. And I really want to express one thing they're saying right now is that spirit guides are not higher than us. They're not on this hierarchy. So this also ties into like psychics. Like when we ask someone, we're like, tell us this because my guides, like it implies that they're connected to something higher than ourselves. Spirit guides are not better than humans, Um, angels, any of it. Us being in the human experience, it's almost like they're showing me the pyramid right now and like the peak of the pyramid where we could think like that's God's source, right? They're saying flip it around because us being on earth is the God source. Like that is one of the hardest challenges. It's easy for them to say when they're floating in the ethers and they're just like in the light all the time. It's about understanding we're all equal. We're all neutral and not giving our power externalizing to a source, thinking that it's quote unquote higher than us, like our guides um, and really seeing it as all one. And that was really important for me because even if my guide said something that I didn't really believe, like I can go against that because I'm like, well, I'm not giving you the power to think that you know the answer, right? It's like 
again, understanding they're just a guide. They're just energy like us. And they're like confirming this. They're like clapping. I can see them because they'll never leave. But, um, you know, they're saying like that is the key is this understanding. We've given our power away to higher things. We've given our power away to, you know, to priests, all this tough stuff to like, um, like if you think about priests, like they, a lot of churches implied that in order to connect to the divine, you have to connect to another, through another person. And I also see that with psychic readings and a lot of other things. Even again, they are beautiful sources. I, I do really respect them and they lighten a lot of people. They lighten my life. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's the source within you that you need to learn to connect. And that doesn't need to be in a pranayama yoga class. That could literally be like having an argument with your boss and standing up for yourself. That's where you're going to experience God. You know what I mean? It's like going into the resistance of what we were speaking about earlier. Is it intuition or is it fear? Um, and I really see... Yeah, just like everything as a spiritual experience, like everything is made of energy in this matter world. Like we come here to play the game and I'm all about like the game. Like it's so funny because a couple of months ago I could have, I'm like laughing, but I could have made a video being like cities are killing us right now. I'm like, <laughs> I kind of want to live in a city. Like put me in there. Like put me in the energy. Put me in put the me game. Put me in coach. Put me in coach. Yeah, exactly. Wait, what? Put me in, coach. That's a, I used to say that in when I played basketball and my coach would put me on the bench. I'm like, oh, put, put me, me in, coach. coach. Put me in, coach. I love it. There you go. You want to play the game. You're a basketball player. That's a perfect analogy. It's like instead of us, and my mentor said this to me ages ago and it triggered me because I wanted to go off and live in a, um, a community in Nassara when I lived in Costa Rica. I was like, I want to live in a community. And then when that didn't work out, I was like, okay, I'm going to live in a forest away from humanity, away from people until I started connecting to abundance and expansion, it was this awareness of like, well, why are you trying to hide? Like to get into this like cute little bubble, like get into the world and experience it and other people and being triggered and being challenged. Um, and I think that is such a big part some of us can miss if we let it. Um, I think trigger is good for you. I think being like confronted is good for you. I think being uncomfortable is super good for you. And I take that from like having a year of so much confrontation that made me so uncomfortable and being on the other side, I'm like, okay, now I get it spirit. Like I get it now, you know? So yeah. Do guides have an ego mind like humans do? They show me and present themselves as humans because they were, um, they were humans at one point. So they, understood this world but so yes to an extent they're saying but at the same time they're just a soul and, I, and they're kind of bringing me back to what I said earlier which is like sometimes we have this understanding that our soul is just of the pure light and so it is but it also could have a lot of past line life wounding and entities and energies and, and things weaved through it so just because they're a guide doesn't mean that they're like all holy and it's one 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 when I say that um <laughs> But sometimes in my opinion, yeah, like I have some guides that are very sassy. I have some guides that are very bossy. I have some that are quite, they like to humble me. Um, I have so many different types, you know, so it's, it's all an experience. But at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I actually like for, I think they're coming through for this podcast, but in reality, Emilio, I haven't been connected to them at all. Um, and even when I connect to them now, they just point an arrow and they're like, just go straight to your source. Like you don't need to connect to us anymore. Um, and that was beautiful. Like, I don't hear anything for myself pers personally. They like mute themselves now. Um, because before it was like this, um, because connecting to the source for me has instilled a, a level of masculine energy that I never understood possible because whenever I'd hear guides, they go, Oh, go here, do this. This is a breakthrough. But I was never doing anything with that information. Whereas when I hear the source, it just goes, just do this one thing today and that's all you're going to hear today. And then you actually are like working in the reality and like getting things like tangibly done rather than living in this like airy fairy world, which I used to do a lot like shamanic journeys every day. And I'd be like, there was an owl and then I saw this lion and then, you know, I had this guide who was a Pleiade, like goddess and like all. And I'm like, but at the end of the day, like my life wasn't really like energetically it was changing, of course, but like physically not much was moving. Um, and I do think that has a part to play in um you know the spiritual community in regards and tied to money and like there is kind of a level of i don't want to say poverty but it is because there is a lot of that flowing free flowing feminine energy but there's there's there needs to be more of that logic and that tangible creation with that um which i feel has been anchored in when i just connect just to the, like the like whoosh, the pillar of that that force mm -hmm. hmm. 
And I, I want to deep dive into the abundance frequency, but just yeah. a little bit before that, you know, just to close the knot on this topic about the guides, I know that our audience is, is very tapped in. So there are some people in the audience as well that like you can hear and see and smell and taste and touch their spirit guide. Maybe not touch, but <laughs> you, can. <laughs> um, you can. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I'm getting this like this teaching that, you know, really came to me when I started the podcast of all paths lead inward, all choices lead inward. And you say that your your guys are pointing you back to you now. So but that was a process as well. So for someone mm -hmm. that is seeing their guides, you know, we, we address the people that can't see their guides, but those that can, what is the deeper reasoning and purpose for that as well? Oh, yeah. Love like I, I they're laughing right now because it's like there's there's nothing um they're almost saying the words like there's nothing demonic about us i think i've betrayed now that like we shouldn't be connecting to them <laughs> they're here for love and they're here for us to access and here for us to um to be guided by and, and protected and helped but we're sovereign so they respect our choices that if we don't want to or we do so you know they're here for love that that's for sure i still love them completely but i'm like even the other day i was like no offense but i'm done talking to you guys for a while i don't know when and they're like that's fine they're like celebrating it they're like yeah Liz on a different whatever she's on her path you know it's all love it's all love i do want to express that um and for a lot of people i do also want to express like this may not resonate with them at all and that's perfect like this wouldn't have resonated with me a month ago truthfully so like respect your path because again it's just respecting back to your sovereignty of what feels sovereign to you and it's going to be different at different times like the things that i truly believed in my heart and soul were real when i was 12 like i wouldn't want that life right now you know i wouldn't want my bedroom for when i was 12 and it was like justin bieber posters all over my bedroom but i was sovereign with my decision then you know so it's like we're constantly evolving and we're constantly moving and we're, we're constantly growing mm -hmm. hmm. and why do you feel your soul contracted to be able to see the guides in this lifetime what I understand logically my guides have showed me is that I've just mastered it in lifetimes. Like it just mm. became easy. Um, a lot of people are like, how did you train up that gift? The moment I set the intention to have it, it just opened. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It did. It did actually happen overnight. And I still remember the day it happened and it just accelerated. Although my nervous system did crash because it was too much energy. Um, but I think it's just something I mastered. I think it's a gift that I wouldn't have been able to do and still do the work I do now. Um, but I just think it was something my soul mastered and my soul, my personal soul, not anyone else's is just kind of like at this point where I'm like, I think I'm done with that for now. Um, and I've never been happier with my decision, but, um, yeah. Hmm, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you said that in regards to mastering wealth codes, not just seeing spirit guides, but <laughs> you said there are three things that we as humanity need to access. One being anchoring the frequency of power, which we touched a little bit upon. Two, bringing in abundance into your heart. And three, mm -hmm. utilizing your third eye to access the universal language. So what do you want to speak into about abundance and accessing all of these different chakra points in our body? to open ourselves up to receive. Yeah, it's, um, it's a huge, a huge topic. It's a huge energy that when I connected to it, I still remember the day I was living in Canada and I felt the only way I can describe it was kind of like 5d energy. It was like this golden vault of light above me. Um, and it felt like a balloon string was from the top of my head hooked and plugged into that frequency. Um, and I remember that time literally ideas were flooding down prosperity was flooding down my businesses just started taking off my videos are going viral all of this stuff um it's something i go in and out of connecting to but when i connect to expansion i realize that it's not a life of comfort um it's not a life of like what feels cozy and i think that is where a kind of a tie comes in sometimes to spirituality and money is because we choose our comfort and our pleasure and our peace which is beautiful but the abundance frequency is like not here to mess around. Like the people that choose to connect to that frequency, which I do every single day, is going to stretch you out of your comfort. It's going to make you do the things that maybe you believed you weren't meant to do, which in turn is about money. Um, and I do want to express and, and speak about this a little is like there's a lot of sh shadows around money in the world. Like it's the biggest shadow. How I see it when I really strip back is that the creator created us in this world for us to live in. 
And money is, it's not about the money. It's about the experience money, money offers us. Like for me, when I started getting really into my health, it wasn't even an option that I was going to save money for like non-organic food. Like that is absolutely ridiculous that I'd have to like, pers- like to s- be in scarce of money to not be able to get organic food. Like that blew my mind that like people, you know, like, you know, are hoarding their money because of food. Now I understand people's circumstances, but the point I was trying to make was like, it was a real, when I got into this passion and this value of living a healthy lifestyle, I was like, I can't have that old money belief anymore because this health is way more important. So it actually shattered my paradigm about what money was because it was this realization of like, it's just a tool that exchanges us for the value of what we want to experience. And for people that are wanting to have big experiences and travel and, you know, live in a beautiful home and eat beautiful food, that does um, require money. And I like triggering people on this topic. I'll be honest. I get a lot of emails from people. Um, you know, a lot of people in the past were asking me that I charge too much and all of this. I like those emails because <laughs> I think there's this celebration for people to be humble and this celebration for people to, you know, I had lots of emails from people being like, my Buddhist master didn't charge a cent. Like, why are you charging this? This is like out of this world. And I'm like, you're celebrating the Mardi Dom. Like you're celebrating somebody giving, giving, giving all their life force. And truthfully, I always got this vision of like, okay, let's say there's a healer who's like not charging that much. It's like people are celebrating them, but all they're getting is this ego glorification because at the end of the day, they have to pay their bills. Like how are they functioning to make a living for themselves? How are they able to have a roof over their head? So it's like kind of moving back. I really feel my soul chose to like inspire people through, um, expansion of that, of like seeing it as this neutral source. Again, I just see it as neutral. I just see it as neutral. If we can see this as a source of exchange, a lot of people always comment and they're like, what about the people who can't afford you? I'm like, there is hundreds of videos on YouTube giving, giving and and millions of other people's, you know what I mean? Like there is more than information. It's not about the money anymore. A lot of people are like, but what about me? You can't afford information is everywhere. You know what I mean? So this has actually got nothing to do with money because if you wanted resources, it's everywhere. This is a deeper shadow. And I see like we were brought here to live and to experience and money is a part of that. And if we continue to lie and gaslight ourselves and tell us otherwise, it's kind of just like defeating the purpose of this, this experience. So I really encourage people to like claim a reality where they want to create an abundance for the life that they want to live. Like for me, again, organic food is an essentialness. Like that's not even a question for me, like high quality food. Cause I value my health again. So it's like, that was the moment it shattered for my paradigm. So like, if someone were to say they, they, there's like a shifting of values of like, okay, I want freedom, that accessibility is there. And so with the expansion frequency and opening up to that feeling, it's not just about like feeling the frequency of abundance and like feeling the manifestation of money. It's actually about like using the tools that are in this world right now to create that. And there has never been more opportunity like with media, with AI, like literally there's so much opportunities. And this was kind of something you were saying earlier, like you change your perspective of something and it changes. Like, again, I used to be so against AI and now I'm like, this is literally going to change people's lives to have more freedom. Like the people who utilize it. Okay. So how I see it is like, if we choose to live a life of freedom or expansion um, and to help others. I do want to make that clear. Like um, when you have money, you're able to do good for the world. And I think the reason I hone in on spiritual people with this is because they have good hearts. And the fact that we're not the ones in power because we don't have the finances to have because money is power. Like that is true. If we're not able to hold that, we can't really use it. Like the people who have good, who have good hearts, if they had an abundance of money, they would put it into beautiful things. But it's the people who have, like, I think of like Cheetos, for example, making billions. Like that's not serving the planet. That's a lot of money, but it's not serving the planet, obviously. So it's like, if people had an abundance of money, they could utilize that for good reason. So I I say this as kind of like a trigger of like the more money you have, the more you're able to give it to good. You can pay for small businesses. You can support your local farmer. You can put it into good. You can give it to homeless people. Um, You know, I was walking the other day, like I heard God being like, take out your wallet. And I had a lot of cash in there that I did. I forgot about and was like, go around the streets, giving this to homeless people. And the number one thing people kept saying when I handed it to them was, thank you, God. Like this woman looked at me and started crying and was like, thank you, God. 
And I remember like, isn't that so interesting that money is associated with God when you're in the most deepest painful state, like money is God. And that can be triggering for people, but this is what spirit, what God has kind of been showing me is like, see that as an extension of me because I give you opportunity. I give you expansion. I give you freedom. I give you possibility. I give you room for movement. And that has been something that, again, my human mind is, is bashing with and confused with, but on a soul level, my heart feels such peace when I understand that I'm like, ah, We've been the ones creating chaos. We've been the ones creating resistance. We've been the ones suffering. And at the end of the day, that belief, like who is that, who is it serving? Like the belief that we have to live in poverty, that we have to live in scarcity, that we have to live in like a very contracted small life. Like, is that really serving you? If it is, keep doing it. But I think that question is, is something I feel because when that anchor anchors in through the third eye, through the mind, everything else, like you just feel worthy of receiving it because mm. um, the source is neutral. It's not from shame, it's not from dirtiness. And, and you know, a lot of psychics back in the day were on charity base. Like you would give just like the amount you wanted to give them. Yeah, donation. Um, donation, that's the word, sorry, yeah, mm. yeah, that's the word. So it's like a lot of this is weaved into that community. Um, but it doesn't mean that we have to live it. Like the times are moving, the times are evolving. Like I used to be like, when are we just gonna go back to like, cooking under a fire and, you know, like living from the earth. And I'm, I literally had to let like this moment or with prayer of just connecting and being like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> like, yes, community can happen unless all these things can happen, but this is here for a reason. And I actually see all of this for good. I'm like, the, the reason these are here is for good. Even if let's say we could say like, it's harming the planet, like having the internet, because it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of usage that paradigm wasn't serving me in creating a change. So it's like, what I see with spirit is like two truths can be right. Like, like there is no one truth. And I think that's really important. And I use this analogy of like, if you're sitting at a fruit bowl, like in front of a fruit bowl and you see bananas and there's grapes on the other side and someone looks on there and they're on the other side, they're going, no, it's full of grapes. There's no bananas in that fruit bowl. You're ridiculous. You're crazy. And from a higher level, they're both in the fruit bowl. And I see that of like, another person's truth can be truth for them and another tr other person's truth can be truth for them too. And I think that's really important to, to shed light on as well um, with this topic. But the reason I say that was um, I had to let go of that belief and really get with the times and be like, whoa, this is like opportunity. This is tools. Like a lot of people who have like online businesses are able to have freedom. They're able to travel. That was never a thing before. And I s looked at my phone. I was like, this is a portal. Like uh, this is like created a whole different world. And you know, then I even heard like the creator of Apple was a light worker. Like I literally heard this voice being like, there was a reason these phones had to be implanted into everyone in society for people to awaken faster, to connect to one another all over the world. You know, like when we think of like an email that we can send an email, I literally like sent a blast email. It's like, um, like a, a group of people for a course. And like the fact that they just all got delivered within a millisecond all around the world. I was like, that's magic happening right there. Like that is freaking magic. And I see everything as magical now. Whereas again, just with my paradigm before is very much about that. So I'm very passionate about helping people shift that because I just keep going back to the question, like, is it serving you? If it's serving you, beautiful, bellissimo, keep going. If it's not, and you're being honest and transparent with yourself, you're like, I actually want expansion. I want to live an extraordinary life. I want to inspire people with an extraordinary life and living extraordinarily that's where the abundance frequency will swoop you in and, and pick you up and help you. Mm -hmm. mm, I received the insight and I was literally drawing while you were explaining <laughs> this because I received an insight that is mm. reality is created by association. Mm. So if we take the example of money that we're talking about, you can associate money with so many different things. And like, let's say yeah, X percent, and I don't want to categorize people, but like X percent of the population associates money with safety and security and if that's the association that they're making then that's all that the money will circulate toward them they'll just create more security more safety in their life but then there's another association and two truths can be right as you said it's not one is better than the other but you can associate money with experiences impact health therefore extending life force and if you're living through that association, then the money that you receive will circulate and create more of that. 
So I'm like going here, like it's literally about association. And my journey with money has been very interesting. And maybe we can even go deeper in another, another, you know, I'll even, yeah, I'll, I'll just share a little bit because I didn't make money from the podcast for the first three years of doing this. And I'm doing this for at least 40, 50 hours a week. So imagine all these energy resources that I'm pouring in into like, you know, buying the camera, like putting in all my time, doing the research and there it wasn't reciprocal. And it was because I wasn't convinced that what I was doing, people were willing to pay for or people were were seeing value in. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when I started believing more in myself, when I started to open my container, the platform has grown and I'm also starting to see people that they also want to experience a little bit more of me of my interaction with my guests rather than just the episodes so i'm saying all this because it was like my association changed around money the podcast like i literally just hired a growth team we're gonna look for an editor we're gonna look for a content specialist we're gonna create more offerings for the podcast mm -hmm. but this has all had to happen you know on the flip side of me experiencing what is it like to just give, 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 and not be open to receive. Mm -hmm. So for someone that is going through something similar, like they're maybe a healer or they're creating offerings in the world, what's that paradigm shift of going from, let me just charge the donation. Let me just you know ask for a donation. Let me just mm -hmm. charge the minimum, minimum fee I can think of to let me understand my worth of this offering and of my energy and of my time and, you know, step it up in a way. How, what was that lead like for you? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I want to express that, like when you were sharing that entire story with you, like my heart was opening so much because my spirit <laughs> source is celebrating you for that. Like, I really want to congratulate you for that because it felt like a celebration just when you were speaking of that. I really honor that. Um, and yeah, like, it's funny. I'm just being shown two sides. Like we could discuss two sides really briefly with this of like, one side is for ourselves, like just looking in the mirror and being honest with yourself. And you're like, am I done living a struggle? Like, am I done living a life that feels struggling that I can't actually purchase what I want? Like, you know, do you really not like, do you say you don't like nice things? Like, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, there's one side of just looking in the mirror and really gracing yourself with this like love, like a mother of just being like, look, like, are you happy living this way? Like, does this really fulfill you? Does this sustain you? Because kind of going back to what you're saying about the podcast, like financially, if we can't receive from that, like you can't even sustain the mission that spirit has put you here to create. Like, that's just the way the world is now. So it's a real understanding of like, can I sustain this? So there's like one human element of me of seeing that. And then the second one is really going deep, deep down to the source of this reality why do we come here? We come here for experience. That's literally the purpose of this whole planet is for us to experience. That's why we come here. It's like why we literally sit in our mother's womb for nine months, sometimes 10 months, like so much work has been put in for us to come into the physical, for us to just deny the physical. Like that is like absurd to me. Um, so I really encourage people to like dive deep within their body, within their soul, within their ancientness and really ask themselves like to reveal what money is to them. Like, I'm not here to tell them what money is. Like that's, that's up to their sovereignty to tune in and ask their spirit to be like, what is it to me? Because only them can create a value system that links to that. So like for association might be like yours, like, oh my God, this makes sense. But to someone else, they might be like, that doesn't resonate with me, you know? Or like what I'm saying, they'd be like, no, that's ridiculous. You know, see, she's selfish or to, but to me, it feels so resonant. So it's more about sovereignty and tuning in and asking themselves and their spirit will reveal the answer like through a message, through a synchronicity, through a dream of what that means to them, which then can hopefully lead them on kind of like a, I keep hearing a neutrality path back to neutralness. Not, it's not good. It's not bad. It's a neutral source. Like I don't see money as like God that it's like all good. I see it as a neutral source and the keyword is source because it's like a tool. It's a source that offers me different experiences that my soul wants to experience, you know? So, um, I just encourage people to ask within themselves, like what it means to them. Um, and just kind of like a side note, like whenever I look at the ocean and how expansive it is, like that is our natural freaking nature. 
and the forgettingness that we are expansive, infinite beings, like the energy of money is that, you know, like there's, there's a connection there for sure. So remembering who you are is the first step to remembering who you can be on this planet. Mm. Do you feel that money aligns with certain universal laws that we can attune to and associate with? Of course. Like I see money as, um, again, just an energy, like just a piece of paper. Like I don't, I don't put it on a pedestal. I see it as, as neutral as a leaf or because everything at a higher level is energy. And this kind of goes back to that dream I had that just like blew my mind, which was like everything in this universe is perfect. It's the same. It's energy. The dark is the same as the light. It's all energy. Like this neutrality dropped in of like, it's all the same. And so from that understanding, I interviewed a beautiful w woman called Crystal uh, cause I was doing a psychic reading and spirit was like, you just need to interview this woman. And she says that she sees like a, I don't know what they're called, like a Birkin bag, like a, I think, or like a, like a designer bag. That's like 20 grand. She sees that as the same equivalent as a plastic bag. Like she's like, they're the same thing. Like, it's not even like she's programmed herself cause she sees energy. She's like, they're the same freaking thing. So it's like demonizing money is actually just demonizing energy. So it's kind of like she sees it all as this neutral neutrality state. And it's like, and she physically sees that. So she embodies that. So I, th the reason I'm, I'm passionate talking about money is not because it's like, oh, money is God. Like money is amazing. It's because it's just a neutral source. And if we go and even layer deeper, which my guides have told me before in the past when I was um, doing wealth codes was how much is creating illness in people's bodies and their nervous systems by demonizing money. Like it's creating sickness by them associating when they hear the word money with shame, with fear, with scarcity, with lack, like on a human level, they're like, it's hurting people's bodies. So as a quote unquote light worker or whatever you want to call yourself, it's like, they were showing me like, it's about them healing that. Like, what do they respond with? Because that's a circuit of energy that's creating destruction or expansion. So that's kind of what I'm more drilling in with the, the concept is like just seeing it like, oh, it's just another thing. Not stop demonizing it because it's not serving your body or your spirit. Um, but yeah, that's something my guides really highlighted in. They're like, that's one of the main reasons for illness and cancer and sickness. It's not even about their physical man manifestation of, of the money. It's the stress they induce with that reality, with that experience. Um, you know, I had a friend who is broke and is the most unstressed person ever, even though like, I'd be like, are you not a little bit, you know, worried here? Like you're putting yourself in situations, but she's like, no. And then spirit was like, that's what, like, that's the energy. It's this understanding that we're not associating the energy with the reality. And so we can choose the energy, which then altercates people in the comments in a video said altercate is the wrong word i think it's alter alter the reality alter yeah so <laughs> i don't know if that's an english word i usually make up a lot of words um, Me too. especially <laughs> in spanish in, in spanish i make up a lot of words <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah so to answer your question i just when crystal said that that was like a huge thing for me of like whoa you know, like she sees it all the same. She sees, and I think Mateus to Stefano, I watched, I don't watch him, but I watched like something told me to watch a podcast and click to a certain number. Cause I, that happens to me a lot. And he <laughs> was like, I see plants and animals the same, like they're the same. Um, and Crystal said the same as well, which I thought was interesting. She's like, it's all just energy. Like it's all the same. And, and it's interesting because like, I just want to give one more example because this is kind of tying back to something I was saying with like how sometimes spirit, what we see from our level is like so messed up, but on a spirit level, it's perfect and divine. I always think about like animals killing each other and how they're just energy. And it's not to say humans should kill each other. Absolutely not. But the point is, is like, that's just energy is expressing itself. We're not looking at that animal being like, you are demonic. Like you are like... Okay, I really don't want to give the permission to people to kill people, but it's you the get the cycle of life in nature. Exactly. It's the, it's the Lion King. <laughs> exactly. I love lions. So it's like basically the understanding of like everything is just energy. And can we separate like, again, I really don't want it to sound like I'm just giving permission to murder, but it's like the right or wrong of money. Like that's what I was kind of tying it into there. Um, it's like just seeing it all as neutral, as one. Um, which is how Crystal saw it. And it really like impacted me when she said that because I felt it and I was like, oh, like my body resonated with that. So, yeah. What is the greatest money investment that you've ever made that has gave you the highest energetic return? 
an iPad. <laughs> really? <laughs> so random. Um, it was weird. I had a dream like a month ago. My guides in my dream said, you have to go buy an iPad. And I was like, why? And I just woke up and was like, okay, went to the Apple store. Uh, the amount of happiness that has brought me, Emilio, like I like pretty little things. I like drawing. I like doing all of that stuff. I know it sounds like kind of superficial. Uh, it wasn't a crystal. It wasn't like any like experience. It was actually like an iPad. Um, on another level, I could say my Vitavix blender because that is the best blender in the entire world for food. Um, I'm realizing you're probably talking about like experiences, which sounds quite shallow. Anything, like, anything. An, okay, anything. an iPad. I think, um, uh, what, I, what could I say? I feel like everything I spend money on is an experience, you know, like everything we do, like travel, I could say like, oh, going here, going there, which sounds more marvelous. But um, no, I would actually say my iPad has been giving me the biggest return because it's so small. I can travel with it. I can run my business with it anywhere at any time. It is literally like this size. Um, and it has opened my world up to more of acceptance of the online world and the opportunities that it's giving us nowadays. Like it was like a portal of accessing of like enlarging the screen to be really look at this and be like, okay, this is a new world now. How can I take advantage of this for the greater good of humanity? So it may sound like kind of like a small thing, but there, there's a whole web to that. So yeah, my iPad, what about you? Hmm. I want to say like even this this microphone because it, it is mm -hmm. symbolic of me stepping into bringing my voice out into the world and not being afraid and also it symbolizes connection um, I've been able to connect with extraordinary people like you all around the world and there's never a lack of people that I can talk to through this microphone so mm. yeah I would also say and it's you know and it's technology. It's it's the new iteration of of connection. It's the new iteration of creativity, as you mentioned with your painting on the iPad. But we can also use. I could use this microphone to speak hate in the world. So it's like, how do we use the tools that we put our money into um, in a greater way? And I'll also ask everyone in the comments what has been their greatest money investment that has gave mm -hmm. the highest energetic return. Um, as you know, we end every show with a segment called The Final Trio, even though I don't want to end it right now. Um, but before that, where would you send people to connect with you, your work, your energy, the offerings that you're bringing to the world? Where would you send people to connect? Yeah, I actually don't use Instagram at all, but I'm going to be making a comeback there. That's what I've been guided to. So you can find me at Ella Ringrose. That's where you'll find me. And then also my YouTube is Ella Ringrose. Um, and yeah, you can find all my offerings over there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. The first question I wanted to ask in the final trio is what is one thing that ISIS has taught you that would accelerate humanity's path toward full sovereignty? I love this because ISIS was the like the energy of ISIS was the only energy I hated. Like I resisted. I didn't like it was too dark for me or something. But in connection for many years, but in connection with that energy recently or that spirit, it's again, this awakening of like the dark is the light now. I, and maybe that's because I was implanted with this experience of this understanding that Isis was dark and not of the light. Um, I never experienced her in a light form. It never felt like light to me. It felt very like fire, but like kind of scary to me. And in that scarce of it, what she taught me was again, like, don't be afraid of your darkness. Don't be afraid of your light. Um, they're all of the one creation. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. And this one, I don't know why it came to me, but it was, <laughs> what is the deeper meaning behind gifting someone a rose? <laughs> I love roses. <laughs> I don't I know why roses. that question came up for me. Well, it makes sense. It's <laughs> in my surname. I have roses tattooed all over my body. Um, oh God, my mom's watching this. Um, <laughs> I believe the rose is the frequency of the highest form of love. It's one of the, it is the highest frequency of flower in the world. And they say that when your soul leaves the body, when we have a, or people have near death experiences and you've sure you've interviewed people and they've experienced more light than they ever could. It translates to the frequency of the rose. So I would say it is a, a gift of the meaning of life. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. So much love. I love I li it's so weird. I smelled a rose right before the call. I was walking around the park with my mom and my mom was like, go smell that rose. <laughs> <laughs> and 
we, we were chatting with uh, Rebecca Campbell. She created the, mm. the Oracle of the Rose. And yeah, I mean, I, I, for me, flowers have just been like very, very indifferent. And the way that she spoke into it about how they represent beauty and how flowers allow you to see more beauty in your life. It's like that, that was a big paradigm shift for me. It's like when you give someone a rose, you're acknowledging the beauty in them, but you're also bringing them to see more beauty within themselves as well so yeah and the innocence of it too that beauty is innocence because flowers are so delicate like you can like they're so innocent but what i love about the rose is that it has thorns mm. you know like it's protecting its beauty it's protecting its light it represents the dark and the light and i find that fascinating that it's mm. again the highest the highest frequency and i love rebecca campbell i actually have like two of her rose decks two of her water decks um, two of her article light decks. I love, I love her. She lives in Glastonbury in ac across the pond. I, I really want to go to. She, she's beautiful. I'll have to watch yeah. that. Go, go visit her. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's coming to Spain soon. So, um, the last question I wanted to ask you is, I'm like torn between three that I could ask right now, but I'm just gonna trust the middle one. <laughs> What is the latest quantum jump that you've experienced in your life? Letting go of absolutely everything I thought was truth. Um, even in the fear that I had made so much videos with evidence of that old belief system, like letting go of absolutely everything, even like psychic work, which I thought I'd never, never do. Like letting cacao. go. Cacao. <laughs> I don't drink cacao anymore, would you believe? Not that I'm against it. I just, yeah, I just haven't been pulled. It's like letting go of everything I thought um, and what's interesting is this was something that, uh, healed for me recently where like, sometimes we want to attach to everything. Like we want to attach to spiritual, we want to attach to things to give us identities. And, um, I remember this moment, I got a vision of when I was younger, um, being at a farm and my parents weren't there. My auntie brought me. And in that moment I was like blown away the beauty of like this horse or I think it was a donkey and I remember that moment being like I have to identify with the donkey because my parents weren't there so I felt unworthy of love even though they were like just at home but it was this understanding of like okay I have to identify with an obsession with this and like you know I'm I don't know why but it was like this obsession to then feel worthy of love and so it's been a journey of like stripping away from everything I thought I was and actually that creates fluidity because you just realize we're not attached to anything because we're spirits. So we can love one thing the next day. And, and my friend actually said this to me recently. She was like, we were lying in bed and she was like, this isn't like a bad thing, but it's not necessarily a good thing. She's like, you change a lot, Ella. She's like, one day you say you hate like this and the next day you fall in love with it. And I, she was like, why is that? And I was like, I don't know because that is true. Like I just experience everything. I might say I hate the color red and the next day I'm like tattoo it all over my body, you know, but I think it's because my spirit has come here to experience everything. So it, it tends to be that like I experience something that I don't like it and then I actually move into experiencing it. I don't know if that's it, but yeah, letting go of, of everything I, I thought I knew and that I thought was right and the stubbornness of my ego to kind of surrender to something that um, was beyond what I knew until that point. Mm. Mm -hmm. What did you get to know once you let go of everything you thought you knew? Ah, oh, it, it wasn't even what I knew. It was that my reality was shifting at a miraculous rate because the things I was resisting through stubbornness of believing I had to be a certain way and do things a certain way, and you know, it's ironic how like they always say like mothers are always right. My mom has been telling me so many things that I should have been doing for so long. And it's so wild that I'm doing every single thing she said from the get go. And she's always looking at me like, I literally said this, but I was too stubborn to be experimental with this or also have so much ingrained belief systems around this or programming or conditioning um, in so many different ways from different things. It just, yeah, it was just like the opportunity to actually admit that I don't know everything. I don't know anything actually, not even, I don't know everything. I don't know anything because it was in that piece that I realized that there's something higher than me that can bring me what it knows I need. Um, because in many times, like through many paths, although it may seem beautiful and a beautiful life, there was a lot of pain and there was a lot of sadness. And I didn't want to admit that either, you know, cause of like the mentalness of being like, no, this is the way I have to live instead of being like, what if I don't know? And I just like trust 
what I'm being guided to do, even though logically it actually doesn't make sense up until this point. And it, it literally moves me because it just has brought me so much peace. And it's actually given me this clearer lens of just taking off these goggles and seeing life for what it really is and how simple it truly is and living in that simplicity whilst I create and move through everything um, versus like these bias, like extravagant perceptions and opinions and ways of being and this fighter in me, you know, it it's brought me to kind of, yeah, my knees, like just of acceptance um, and peace, like a lot, a lot of peace and safety. Like what's so fascinating, Emilio, is um, I used to chew my jaw from anxiety for years um, the moment this happened, I haven't chewed my jaw once. Like it just stopped. Like my nervous system is the most relaxed it's ever been. After every healing thing I've done, uh, it still wasn't, you know? And and since making this decision, it's been like, yeah, like super peaceful. Yeah. You guys are like, she already has a chiseled jawline. We're just going to leave it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Ella Ring Rose. That felt like um, not even just one conversation, but like a hundred and one. Uh, I could definitely feel the transformation that you've gone through since the last time we were here. And I'm sure people that tune into the first conversation can feel that you quantum leaped in, in your own way. And it was just fascinating to see and hold space for all your shifts of perspectives and, and seeing the world in a new way, thus changing your world. Um, I'm super grateful of weaving together with you and I know we will continue for many, many years down the line. So thank you from the heart for being here, showing up and speaking your truth. Thank much you love. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>